having the means to pay but choose to delay, then that person is considered as causing injustice and injustice and committing a prohibited act. And what would be the treatment for this type of debtors who have the means to pay but choose not to pay? Uh, the Prophet said in another hadith, "Layul wajidi yahilu abduhu wa akubatu." Okay, basically, the delay of a person who have the means to pay would uh, allow for his defamation and his punishment. So basically, you can defame the person basically by publishing his names as you know blacklist his name uh, and, you, and publishing that he's a debtor who is delaying his payment and also punishment. So in the past, this type of debtor have been punished in various ways. They may be in prison and may be punished by the court in order to get him to pay. Okay, and other recovery mechanisms can be imposed. Okay, for example, you can have order from the court to foreclose his assets for the payment, etc. Okay, so that is the scenario. Basically, if the debtor has no uh, financial difficulty and just you know purposely. Del, uh, being delinquent, then you can force him to pay, and all legal means can be taken in order to get the person to pay. The second scenario is <coughs> the debtor actually is in financial distress. So here it is uh, a bit less straightforward in the sense of the treatment of this type of debtors, eh? because they don't have the means to pay. So how would you um, deal with this type of debtors? So there are a few guides from the Quran uh, as well as from the Hadith. Uh, one of the guide in the Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, basically, it says if the debtor is in financial distress, the creditor should give extension of time, give more time. Eh? The verse says, "Wa inka nazu usratin fa naziratun illa maisara." If the debtor is in hardship. Then you should give extension of time until he becomes better. Okay, when his financial position becomes better, so you give extension of time so that he can improve, so that his financial position would be better and he can start to pay his obligation. Okay, so that is the first option eh, to give extension of time. The second option is to release or reduce the debt, if possible. Okay, let's say the creditor is wealthy, is people of means, uh, they can afford to release the debt or reduce the debt on the debtor. Debt is better. Wa anta sadaku khairul lakum. If you become charitable by releasing or reducing the debt, it is better for you. But of course, we're talking about financial institutions. Uh, they actually uh, having a debt involving their shareholders' money or their depositors' money. So, in general, the Islamic financial institution can't afford, cannot afford, to to release their debtor from from the debt obligation. To some extent, I think they can reduce the amount of debt, particularly on the profit portion, perhaps. Okay, uh, that is another option. Uh, the next guide with regards to uh, uh, this type of default by debtor in financial dis distress. There should not be any extra charge for extension of time. Okay, uh, I've mentioned under the first guide, you should give extension of time because the person is in hardship. Now, most of the time, the financial institution would say, "Can we charge something for that?" Okay, because that is the conventional mindset. Each time passing is money. Okay, so whenever there's extension of time, they are thinking about charging extra. So. The guide under Sharia is no extra charge just for the extension of time. No, you cannot charge just for the extension of time because under Islamic principle, time is neutral. It can give you benefit. It can also cause your losses. So you cannot just charge because of the passage of time. Okay. So the verse says, "Falakum ruusu amwalikum la tazlimu na wala tuzlamu." You can only take your capital amount, your principal sum, so that you are not causing. Injustice to the debtor, and you also is not being victimized by the debtor. You're getting back your principal amount. You cannot charge anything over and above the principal amount. Okay, so that's the third scenario, or that's the third guide. The rest basically can the creditor recover legal and recovery costs 
from the defaulting debtor. Uh, let's say they have to engage lawyers, they have to pay for uh, court fees, for example, or other things. Uh, actual out-of-pocket costs due to the default. Yes, this can be reimbursed from the defaulting debtor. Uh, if there is any collateral taken uh, from the debtor, the collateral can be liquidated, uh, can be sold in order to recover the debt. Okay, so if any charge, you can have foreclosure and sale of the asset and recover the amount of debt. The creditor also can accelerate outstanding debt upon default if provided in the agreement. Uh, most BBA involve like say 20 years, 15 years. So if the default occur on the second year, you can actually accelerate all the payment uh, for the 20 years or 15 years. Uh, and of course now in Malaysia subject to IBRA uh, as may be imposed by the central bank. Okay. And the last point there is basically asset tracing would be allowed if any. Uh, for example, uh, if the financing involves the sale of asset, okay, uh, sale of asset, uh, is a Murabaha financing for example, and the asset uh, let's say is certain machines. Okay. So when the buyer or the customer with the debtor failed to pay um, and the asset is still intact, so you can actually recover the price from the sale of that asset. Okay, you can take back the asset and sell it and recover the debt. So in that sense, the creditor who was before the seller can take priority over the other uh, creditors of that debtor in that situation with regards to that particular asset which is involved in the Morabaha or in the Bank de Taman Ajil, for example. Okay? So these are some of the uh, guide with regards to um, debtor in financial distress and this guide are generally adapted from Sharia Standard Number no. 3 in the AUF Sharia Standard 2010. Now, having a look at these two uh, uh, scenarios, uh, I just want to highlight that sometimes uh, when we're talking about default, uh, if you're talking about individual customers, then it will be easier to identify whether they are in the first category or in the second category, whether they are actually not in financial distress or whether they are in financial distress. It will be easier to identify by looking at their uh, assets, uh, whatever they have. But sometimes when we look at corporations uh, and companies, the, the line that differentiate between a company uh, not in financial distress and the company in financial distress may be a bit uh, weaker because sometimes the company has all the assets but do not have available cash flow to meet the payment under their contract. Okay? So can you categorize this company as Moksir uh, or the financial distress or hardship as mentioned in the Quran? Okay? So this is another another uh, difficulty because uh, I think in Arabic the system is the difference between a ta'athun Ta'athur and al okay? uh, financial hardship and uh, cash flow problems. Yeah, cash flow problem doesn't mean that you are actually a destitute or a very, uh, uh, you know, having a lot of financial problem. No, you have to own the assets, but you don't have cash flow at the time to, to meet the obligation. So this is uh, another issue. How would you classify some of those corporations? Uh, facing near default, uh, whether they are actually under the first category where they can be forced to pay, or they are under the second category where extension of time can be given, okay, uh, or should be given. Okay, so this is uh, one thing that perhaps uh, for the audience to think about. Because although they always talk about two scenarios, but sometimes we have the in betweens, especially with regards to uh, corporations. Okay, now. When we look at the contemporary Sharia rulings on the issue of default and late payment of debts, it is a clear cut that if you were to charge an extra amount on the debtor because of the delay or because of the extension of time for payment, that is generally regarded as riba, which is being prohibited. Okay? So if you look at uh, the ruling, 
by Fiqh Academy uh, of Rabita al Islami, it was uh, mentioned in its 11th meeting in 1989 that when the creditor put a condition on the debtor to pay an amount of money as a specific financial penalty or a specific rate if he, that is the debtor, is late in paying at the agreed time, the condition is invalid and not enforceable. In fact, it is not permissible because this is exactly riba al-jahiliyah that the Quran prohibits. So basically, you put a condition, we extend the time, and you have to pay extra. That is clear-cut prohibited. Similarly, in Fiqh Academy OIC's ruling uh, in relation to Baik Bitaksid in 1990, it says that if the buyer or debtor is late in paying the installments at a specified time, it is not permissible to impose on him any addition to the debt, whether based on a precondition or without a precondition, because that is a prohibited riba. Okay, and in Nadwa al Baraka, uh, they also have uh, an, a fatwa uh, which says that it is not permissible to implement penalty on delay in paying Qat Hassan. Okay, so essentially, you cannot charge extra when you extend the time uh, of payment of the debt. However, we have seen actually a ruling uh, 